Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today, uh, quite a cool topic, but not as cool as Kirby calculus, but it's very useful for four manifolds later. So a diagrammatic version of the Heegaard splitting. So what is a Heegaard diagram? And I should say again that it's actually the Danish name, so it's probably Heegaard. Um, but I will mispronounce it all the time. Anyway, so a Heegaard diagram, or maybe a bit easier for me, handle diagrams. Let me call them handle diagrams. Let me repeat what we have seen last time. So this handle splitting, very good. So now I've avoided pronouncing the name, um, is just a really cool idea. And it comes from the very simple observation that you can kind of split the sphere into the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, which is very simple. But in general, you just have two uh, handle bodies and the handle body in this case is just something like a donut really filled um can have more handles but it's something like a donut can have fewer handles or can have zero handles but it's something like this and your manifold is a union is kind of a union of that and there's some gluing map along the boundary of the splitting and the handle is really what we have seen for the surfaces it's just this picture that you attach something to a standard object like a sphere and of course, that is just a donut. The difference to the surfaces, I say it again, is that in this case, I don't have swim rings. I really have donuts, so they're not hollow um, at all. So it's a really a three-dimensional object, as we wanted, because obviously, uh, we're doing three-dimensional topology. Maybe not obviously, but as a reminder, we're doing three-dimensional topology. And this handle splitting, or the hay cart splitting, is exactly uh, split it into two handle bodies and glue along the common boundary. And the point is, uh, what is kind of a cool theorem due to a for aforementioned uh, handle, uh, sorry, hey card, uh, is that it just works for all closed orientable three manifolds. And um, that's what we, well, that these are the kind of the main ones anyway. So that's pretty cool. So we like to describe it more combinatorially, like with the Dane surgery, uh, we had a combinatorial description using the Kirby calculus. So we would like to describe it more combinatorially. And that's what we are going to do. So the idea is essentially the same as for the Dane surgery. So you glue those two things here, the uh, H and H prime together along the common boundary, which is kind of the surface here. Uh, so this is, would be the boundary of H prime. And here's the surface. So I really should say that this is the surface is the boundary of H, which is a, in general some kind of genus G surface, which we have already seen before. And all the gluing of two genus G surfaces to, to one another are determined where the meridians go. Remember for G equals one, we had this picture that the meridian uh, goes to gamma and gamma is some combination of the meridian and the longitude. So here it goes once around the longitude and apparently three times around the meridian. So three times M plus L is gamma. And I just say my meridian is glued in this fashion to the curve gamma. And you can do the same for uh, well, the higher genus. So you would say A, A and D go to some sum of A, A, B, C, Ds, whatever it is, yeah, A, B, C, Ds. And that's kind of a general. So you can glue them together in surfaces of genus G. And as again, as for Dane surgery, it's really the same idea uh, determined by the meridians. But we do something slightly different. We just say, well, we pick curves, one for H and one for uh, H prime, so alphas and betas, G of them, kind of the defining curves. And this is what is our gamma upstairs, so the gluing curves for, uh, the, for, for the H on H bar. So we take, well, two sets of them, uh, what, well, alpha one up to alpha G and beta one up to beta G. And we draw them on one handle body. It's kind of the convention here. But here are just really the attaching curves for delta and delta prime, exactly in the same way, uh, kind of really like as in the same way for the Dane surgery. So here, for example, the attaching curves beta and, uh, and beta 1 are very boring. And the attaching curves alpha and alpha 2 are a little bit more complicated. And here, the genus is 2. So in order to make that work, I should have said that that these two guys always have the same genus. So these two guys have the same genus. So this is just some fixed genus G. So here alpha one, alpha two, genus is two. And beta one, beta two, and these are the attaching curves for um, the, the handle body gluing. And the only restriction is, and because otherwise the gluing is a little bit stupid, 
that they kind of are linear independent in a certain way. But if you know what homology is, then they form kind of a set of linear independent curves in homology. Otherwise, the gluing will be a little bit degenerate, and we don't want that. Okay, but it's a pretty simple picture. So you just draw um, a genus G surface and two times G curves on it. Uh, the alpha curves and the beta curves, which are the attaching curves for um, the handle bodies that he would like to glue together. And yes, so and the Hegat diagrams describe exactly this Hegat operation, the Hegat splitting, and that's that's pretty cool actually. So you just have diagrams that live on a genus G handle body, which is a bit more complicated than, or well, depends a bit. So the Kirby calculus just has a lot of links and framed links and you glue a lot of tori inside. And here you just have one and you glue everything together in one step. Um, so the picture here tends to get a bit messy, uh, but it's kind of an operation that works in one step, while Kirby calculus is just attaching a lot of things in a lot of operations. So it depends a bit what you like more. Um, I personally tend to like Kirby calculus a little bit more. That's why it appeared earlier, but it's it's really kind of what you would like to do with, uh, with the story. So one of them, I said, is I said, is very efficient. The hay cart splitting just two handle bodies and you glue them together in a potentially crazy way. And um, the Kirby calculus is less efficient, but a bit easier to imagine. So you just have many links and you glue in many, uh, many tori in this case. Again, kind of use the same trick with this meridian type of trick. And you can actually, well, you could simplify the hay diagrams a little bit uh, and it works as follows. For, so for G equals one, and for this works actually for G arbitrary, you just kind of draw those little disks instead of the handle bodies. And you think of them as just being bended together into the handle. Yeah, something like here's a disk, here's a disk, and here's a handle. And so you really draw diagrams in the plane minus two disks, and the two disks should represent the handle. And to go, go, to go back to S, so S, let me just say it again. So this one, the gluing surface, S is the boundary of both, the boundary of H and the boundary of H prime. So the surface of genus G. So to get back S, you should think of like compactifying at infinity to get the sphere and then gluing those circles together to get a handle. And then you can draw the Hegar diagrams, in this case, just alpha and beta directly on the plane, which is a bit easier to imagine. So here a Hegat, he, a Hegart diagram, a handle diagram. Here a handle diagram, for S3, for example, and here a handle diagram for S1 cross S2. And you, you can do that in for arbitrary genus, actually. Uh, for example, here's a genus 2 picture. In genus 2, the only thing you have is, well, this is 2, and this is the one handle. You just have more of them, and you just still draw your little curves uh, on the plane. And for example, above, we see this little twist here that you can see here the the curve B does this little twist, and it allows you to kind of, if you think of this as being the gluing, it's exactly the gluing of those funny lens spaces. Um, that's how it works. Okay, so Hecard diagrams, uh, handle diagrams, are a bit more efficient in some sense than the Kirby calculus, but also a bit harder to imagine because it kind of does everything in one step. And it depends a bit what you would like to do. So for three manifolds, you kind of have the choice to go for either one of them. Um, but turns out that for higher manifolds, you kind of want both of them anyway. And that's why we ran through Hecard diagrams, so, uh, or handle diagrams. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.